Jesus. Wow, so we're gonna wait for a couple more people to log in here. Blessings, uh, was that Nicholas? Blessings to you, my brother. Blessings to you, my brother. Listen, I have a, uh, uh, the Lord had given me a word earlier in the day. And uh, uh, just before I was uh, set to release it, he shifted me. And I said, Lord, is there something else that you want me to discuss? Is there something else that you want me to say? Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And he said, tell my people there will be rejoicing in my house. Mm. Yes, Lord Jesus. Listen, this is a right, this is a right now word. There is such a prophetic move of God. There is such a flow of God that you need to hear this word. Glory to God, Father. So in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you, Father, for your word, Father. Your word is truth, Father. Send forth your word, Father, and I give you all the praise, all the glory and honor, Father, in Jesus' name. The Lord spoke to me and he said, there will be rejoicing in my house. Listen, and I know for some of you here, there is another word that I'm going to release later on that the Lord put on my heart for some of you, that it is a major, major word, major revelation. Amen. But the Lord says this: there will be rejoicing in my house. And he said this, look, this is the word he said, I am going to sing over my people. Oh, glory to God. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Listen to what I'm saying. He said, I am going to sing over my people. See, let me just say this, church, you have no idea how significant this is, and some of you don't even know what this really means, but when the time comes, as God begins, watch this, as you begin to see matters of the world unfold, as you begin to see matters of the world unfold, you begin, some of you are going to be sin, begin to see that is going to be precisely the time where God shows you the distinction that some of you could not see before. You see, sometimes it's hard to tell. That, uh, help me, Lord. How do I say this? For some of you, it's been hard for you to discern just how much God has kept you or how much uh, 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 God's head has been on your life just by the way he kept you. But wait till you see when God begins. Watch this. Wait till you begin to see how when everything is coming down God is lifting you up then you're going to begin to discern how the hand of God has been on your life this whole time some of you even though you've been told that God is with you and God's hand is upon your life because watch this because you didn't see certain things you could not discern but the Lord says this even the things that you could not discern before you are getting ready to discern now because this is when it becomes obvious you see sometimes watch this sometimes it's hard to discern the light watch this but it's hard to discern a candle watch this in broad daylight but wait until watch this wait until the lights go off wait until the lights go off then you're gonna say oh Lord I missed the praise I missed I I missed the praise that you were owed. Lord, in those times, I did not give you the praise that you were due because I could not see how much you are with me. But Lord, it's clear now. Lord, it's clear now. Some of you gonna owe God some back praise. Some of you gonna owe God some back praise because there are times where some of you have been complaining. Watch this when you could not discern. See, the, see when you when sometimes when we can't discern, though it's either praise or complain. Mm, 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 mm. And see, and see, and see, and when we don't understand what is happening spiritually we can be led to complain watch this when we don't know better that's why Paul says this rejoice always and again I say rejoice why because that is a form of protection because you won't always know or discern what God is doing and sometimes the what it looks like around you can be deception sometimes the elements around you can deceive you oh sometimes it'll look like God is not there sometimes it'll look like God is not for you and something right and you will be seduced that is seduction you will be seduced into complaining watch this when you don't discern that God is there and God, what God is doing see sometimes God can be working on something on a larger scale watch this sometimes God will work on things on a larger scale in our life for our life watch this and watch this while he's at work we start complaining uh, 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 uh. Because we don't often know how to handle, how to handle, watch this, how to handle or compose ourselves when God is working. Come on, church. Uh, that's why, that's why it is a 
That's why walking in faith is a very unique. It's always giving God the benefit of the doubt. And so we praise in every circumstances because we know that he who began a good work, watch this, we know that once even if God started something, there is no way he can get into the middle of it and, 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 and not finish it. Why? Because he has too much sense. God considers the matter before he considers the construction. He considers the cost before he begins the labor. So it doesn't matter. And this is something that we need to know. But because, because operating in, uh, watch this, because maturing in faith and development in terms of our walk with God requires, watch this, requires that there are, there, that, uh, that there are spiritual answers, there are, that there are spiritual determinations or answers that we, we must grow into. Oh, come on, somebody that we must grow into and so sometimes it can seem like hold on i am in a holding period or god is not doing something watch this or my life is or this is what's happening to me or around me and yet that's the very thing that's the very time where god is going to work building something you see god could be to building your tomorrow while you complaining about today mm, yeah that's the word mm-hmm Yep. For some of you, God has been busy building your, constructing your tomorrow while you are complaining about today. Mm -hmm. That's why as a child of God, it can never be about what it looks like. It must always be about what God has spoken. See, you got to know that there is an expected end attached to the word that God has given you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So watch this, watch this. And I want to say something. Look, 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 look. Let me read this. Zephaniah, let's read Zephaniah 3 and 17. I was out doing some uh, 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 doing some business, right? And and I just felt really led to uh, come on and release this word, amen? And I know, I know. You see, some of you have been, uh, some of you have been in an odd place, uh, but you also felt odd. Mm, 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 mm. Can I just break something down that the Holy Spirit showed me? That just blew my mind. He said, people, it's difficult for people to, to, to discern God. It's difficult sometimes for people to discern God. Watch this. Uh, uh, or they miss God. They miss a move of God. I'll say it this way. How, help me uh, uh, structure this, Lord. Some people miss God because they don't discern the win of God. See, uh, the wind encapsulates a couple of different, uh, two major components that we overlook. The wind is not just about the time in which God does it. The wind also contains the how. Mm, 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 mm. See, when God wanted to birth a nation, he chose a man named Abram, watch this, who was past the age and his women were past the age. So it wasn't just a time element. Watch this. There was a, also a unique, an odd component. And see, watch this as, as, watch this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me just say this. Let me just go ahead and speak frankly. People are not as spiritual as they think they are. Oh, I'm just going to tell the truth. Oh, they may not like it. Okay. Let's go ahead and just see people are not as spiritual as they think they are. I will tell you historically, people are not as spiritual as they think they are. Why? Because, because there are a significant amount of people who cannot discern what God is doing when he's, when he's beginning something. It's not until, watch this, there are a majority of people who cannot discern the move of God until, it had, it, until it's been completed. Then they look back and try to replicate or duplicate or copy, you see? But, wait, but see, it takes spiritual eyes to really discern, watch this, this is why some of you felt odd. Why? Because, watch this, because uh, uh, what God was doing th through, and through you, watch this, didn't look like what everybody else was doing, and therefore you felt odd, and you didn't realize there's a difference between being odd and unique. See, part of part of the entire process of being of being in the wind of God is willing to be watch this, willing to be uh, uh, unique to God, unique to what God has purpose in that hour. See, uh, when 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 Abraham was called, he was both unique. He was in the wind of God.
the time in which God chose it, watch this, and the method or the matter. You see, the reason why uniqueness is important to God, because uniqueness is how God tells the story that it was only God. Oh, come on, can I just, can I just, can I just speak prophetically to somebody today? See, unique is, uh, see, I want to just minister, minister to somebody who is feeling so bad because you weren't like everybody else. And I'm not talking about in sin and I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about unsubmitted. I'm not talking about none of that, but I'm talking about how your, your position, your upbringing was unique. You may not have grown up in the church. You may have been different than so many other people, but there was a uniqueness about you that always kept you feeling disqualified by what God had called. Oh, come on somebody. By what God. God had what God had him put placed inside your heart. It's a uniqueness. Why does God love uniqueness? Because uniqueness creates the opportunity to make the distinction that it was only God. Oh, so many people have wrecked their, so many people have allowed their heart to break, wreck their brains, wreck their minds, trying to plead with God to allow them to fit in, you know, being, uh, allowing the enemy to come in and break their spirit, uh, allowing the enemy to come in and break their spirit, and they could not embrace the uniqueness, watch this, because they did not discern the win of God. This is so prophetic and revelatory. Somebody needs to write this down. The win of God is not only speaks to a time, but it speaks to the how, and, and and, and, and oftentimes people are not as spiritual as they think they are because they can't discern when God is doing, when God is, when God is building something in terms, watch this, I'll give you a perfect example, Noah building the ark. They could not discern the move of God, watch this, until the ark was complete and the purpose for the ark was revealed and they was like, oh, let me in that thing. Oh, come on, somebody. See, there's some of you, there's going to be people who rejected you before are getting ready to beat on your door because, watch this, see, it's the uniqueness of God. I want you to understand this important, significant things because some of somebody here needs to stop underestimating the call of God on their life. Mm -hmm. The call of God either into ministry, into business, or to whatever thing that God has called you into and the uniqueness of it, uniqueness of it has everything to do with the win because the win is how God makes known it was him. It wasn't because, it wasn't just be, see, you know, when you talk about birth in a nation and the Lord choosing Abraham, the reason why he chose Abraham because there is not, there was nothing about Abraham that, that would say it was something other than God. Well, maybe Abraham just had strong genes. Right? Maybe uh, Sarah, she was already beautiful. Maybe she was just extremely fertile, right? No, it was none of that. He, he put them, there was a unique situation. There was a uniqueness in, in that, that was encapsulated in the win of God. Has, is there anybody here, there, is there anybody here who's been feeling odd, who's been feeling utterly unique about the things that God has placed on your life? And because you didn't watch this and because you didn't quite fit in, you, it, it, you have been almost uncomfortable, watch this, or or, uh, or doubting what God has said to you. See, there's a difference between being unique and also crazy. I ain't gonna get into that. I ain't gonna get into that. I'm not gonna get into that. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there is a difference between being unique and crazy, but I won't touch that. But what I'm talking about is the winds of God, the win. The wind contains two profound elements. It's not just a. It's not just the time in which God took. To, God decided to move. It is the way in which He decided to move. And 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 some of you have been cultivated by God, cultivated through situations in His deliverance over your life, cultivated in the isolation, cultivated in the time. Watch this. Cultivated in your and your walk with God. Watch this to craft you specifically and uniquely for such a time as this even even the idea that the lord has given some of you amen the winds the w h a n the w h e w h e n right the win 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 
wind, right? Not to be confused with the winds, the W-I-N-D-S, the winds. See, because people talk about the winds of change, but let me speak prophetically, the wind, the winds of change, the W-H-E-N apostrophe S, the winds of, of change, the when is it going to happen, God? And, and watch this, and who is it going to be? Watch this, when it happens. Who are you going to choose? This is the winds of change that are actually blowing in your life, that God has been establishing and working, watch this, working you, and also, watch this, some of you, you don't even realize that, watch this, that God is not only, you see, it's not only just you that God has to work out. Oh, Lord, help me. See, it, it's not, it's not just the Pauls that God, that God got to work out. It's also the silences who will be, who will walk with Paul. That's why some. That's why some people feel like, Lord, I'm ready. <laughs> like, yeah, but hold on. Let me finish putting these put finishing touches on Saul. <laughs> Let me uh, on, on Silas. Let me put these finishing touches on who's gonna walk with you. Watch this. I remember. I remember when uh, uh, um, when the Lord opened up a door for uh, 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 a major job for me. Right. You know, I had been like, okay, I look for a job, and I was. I think I was out of job for like uh, six months. Right. And I was like, okay, Lord, I, I just really need to, I really need a job, I, you know, and I remember praying to the Lord, I told you guys about this story, and the Lord was like, I'll take care of you, simple. He didn't say, oh, right, no, it was just simply, I'll take care of you. And I knew that meant I had a job, right? And when I went down to the interview, right, I went down to the interview and I was talking to the president of the company. He said, you know, um, he said, I just got saved. He said, I just got saved. He said, you lucky you didn't meet me six months ago. Oh boy, but see the anointing on my life the anointing on my life, watch this, had, had, had garnered me, me favor, watch this, with a new call upon his life. And so what he said was, you know, people think I was a menace. And people, people marveled. They was like, man, you know what? They were so terrified of him. But I loved him. Oh, I, I'm, I mean, I loved him. And people would tell me stories how he would walk into uh, 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 their uh, 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 their districts and just start throwing stuff, flipping tables over, like, and was just like, your numbers are off and firing people. I mean, he, I mean, he was just like a monster. And I was like, I don't, I don't know that guy, right? They was like, how is he so nice to you? And they was like, and people, you know, people were got a little upset because that favor was real strong, right? <laughs> Right. But here's the thing. When the Lord sent me to the job, the Lord had to deal with him. The Lord had to put him in a position. Watch this to welcome me in. And so I was frustrated during the six months. Like, Lord, why is it taking so long to get a job? What's going on? What's happening, Jesus? What is going on? The Lord was preparing the place. The Lord was at work preparing the place that he would send me into. And I remember the first time I saw uh, somebody say, you should apply there. And I was like, nah, nah, right? But then six months later, they said, man, you should really look into applying there. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> See, the first time the Lord was saying no, I had no peace about it. So I was like, no, I had no even desire for that thing. But the second time it was the, 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 uh, pr the, uh, it was broached, the subject was broached. I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and do it. And not only did I apply, yes, brother Alex, <laughs> I knew it. I knew it, bro. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. God is good, bro. Congratulations, bro. Oh man, me and my wife was praying for you, bro. I'm so excited for you, bro. I am so excited, bro. I told you God is who he says he is and he would not fail you, bro. I told you, I told you God is good. Congratulations, my brother. We speak the Lord's blessings and favor over you. Amen. We speak the Lord's divine protection that he will keep you, watch over you, increase you, and show you favorable in that company, in that place. In Jesus' name, the hand of the Lord is upon you, brother. In the name of the Lord, your time has come. Your time 
time has come and this is just the beginning. Thus saith the Lord, this is just the beginning of God's hand and God's move upon your life. Everything that you have sown in faith, watch this, not only everything that you have sown in faith, but the Lord says this, everything that you have sown in faith and love has come up as a memorial unto God. And the Lord says this, he is about to call your vats to be overflowed. He has about he is about to call your vats to be overflowed. There is coming an overflow in your life, brother, that will be consistent. It's going to be to a point where uh, mm, first it may be awkward. It may be like, whoa, this is just a, right. But the Lord says this, you will come you will come to see that this will become consistent with who, who you are before. God come on somebody who you are before God there will be a consistency that people will say this is just how God deals with Alex you see because you know not only is it, is it just what you it, it's the heart behind it that was so important to God that is that is that it that you have no idea how important it was it was not just the seeds you sow it was not just how you sow it was not just what you sow but it was the heart behind it the love that that just really shook heaven that really shook the the throne room of heaven brother because that is so profound amen so i want to share that with you but but my point is my point is um you know sometimes we can find ourselves being in a hurry or being impatient and we forget uh, we love you too brother we can forget how all oh, consistent God is. You know, sometimes we have to go through the processes, you know, of, of arriving, you know, and, and we, and we, you know, like I said, you know, we all, you know, we all think, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm just saying everybody, we not as, you know, we, you know, even the best of us are not as on point like we think we are because, you know, when we really understand these things about God, we don't allow, we don't allow, we don't allow what situations look like to speak louder than the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, authority of God's words or, or louder than the, uh, the, um, how do I say this? The uh, integrity of God's character and nature. But sometimes because situations come with conversations, they talk to us and they tell us things. And this is how doubt will get in because situation, every situation contains a voice. It's like you wouldn't have doubted unless the situation start talking to you. Mm. You see, this is why we got to guard our hearts because at every, at any given moment, something is trying to convince us of something. And we allow situations to impugn the integrity and the, and the, and the character of God's nature. And we all do it. But I pray that the Lord give us uh, 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 the sight of the eagles, the prophetic sight to really to really see clearly, because sometimes it can be difficult to see past our own the, the, the situation that we currently find ourselves in and really be like, hold on. This is nothing because of who God is, not because the situation does not come with a set of complications. Watch this. But my God always my God always comes with a set of answers. And watch this. My story is not being is not done being told let those who are outside of God struggle with hope because wherein do they have to hope in but that should not be your portion Because there is a, God starts something. There is, there is a mandate that he gives himself to complete it. Now watch this, let's read. I wanna show you something. So the Lord said, there will be rejoicing in my house. There will be rejoicing in my house. I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to tell your people? He said, tell them there will be rejoicing in my house. I said, okay. No, thank you, Holy Spirit. Actually, he said, I'm, I will, I'm going to sing over my people. He said, I'm going to rejoice over there. And I was like, okay. But when he said it, I understood that there was something more significant than just the sound he was making. Oh, come on, somebody. <sighs> See, I'm, <sighs> I sing to my wife from time to time. And it may make her smile and she may feel loved. 
ah, but, it, but, but watch this. It won't break the spirit of witchcraft. Let me let me rephrase that. It might break the spirit of witchcraft, but what I'm saying is, it may watch this. It may not bring her into alignment. It may not shift the. It may not shift the atmosphere. Or watch this. It does not contain the substance that when God sings, He's just not making a sound. He's not making a noise when He sings over you. When God sings over you, what God is doing, He is issuing divine judgment. God singing over you is a declaration from heaven. It comes with force, it comes with authority, watch this, and it comes with provisions. When God sing, sings over you, it is to single you out. He's not just making a sound. He's making a divine decree. And he said, I'm going to sing over my people. And this is what the Lord said, watch this. He said, he said, look, in the midst of difficulties, you will rejoice. In the midst of uh, chaos, you will, you will have cause to rejoice. He said, for I, the Lord God, rejoice over you. And in my, joy, my, and in my rejoicing, I will cause you to rejoice. You see, when the Lord begins to sing over you, the Lord begins to cause those things, watch this, that have not come to bloom. He will begin to cause things to, uh, 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 to flourish. He will begin to cause doors to open. He will begin to cause things to work in your advantage, for your advantage. And he will begin to issue standards and divine decrees of protection mm. come on somebody wow there are some of you listening right now who about who are about to understand just how good he is his plan is God is just about to see how good it is watch this when it becomes all bad And it's really not your fault that you have not been able to discern to this point, really, to be honest with you. Because of your upbringing, because of, you know, all these different reasons, but it's important that you see it now. Because these are things that you need to understand. You have to be able to properly discern these things. You have to be able to watch this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord says this. That it is time that you that you that 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 you are exposed or brought into greater discernment about the kingdom of God. This is it's time for you to have a greater capacity, a greater understanding about the kingdom of God. Watch this and the ways of God. Oh boy. Uh, you know, um, Man, how do I say this? Sometimes the, the time frames that we, we find ourselves living in, okay, demand a greater clarity and order, watch this, to operate in them. You see, the reason why some people are, uh, are frustrated, some people are falling away, some people are white, is because they're trying to process, they're trying to process a, a, a move of God now, watch this, with yesterday's revelation, with yesterday's information. And so there needs to be a deeper understanding, watch this, of the ways of God, the nature of God, so that you can be strengthened in a time of gross darkness. Ah, come on, somebody, because as long as you are here, you should never be without hope. And watch this. There has to be a greater clarity. Watch this because you be, let me say it this way, because the call of your hope, the call, the call on your life has not been abated just because watch this, just because the times are dark. And so there are so many people who have been tempted and really abandoning their calls because they they don't have the clarity to see the strength for it operating the strength for its ability to operate in a time of darkness 
How can I do what God called me to do in this time? And so the, 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 the key, the key to being able to still go forward and not lose hope, watch this, is greater clarity. So there is something that I need to know greater about God. There's something that I need to understand uh, uh, more about the kingdom of God that allows me, watch this, to stand firm, watch this, in the time, watch this, in the time. So I need greater revelation for, the, for even more difficult times. And so, and so we needed the Holy Spirit to quicken, to make alive the 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 the, uh, the truths. Watch this that we read. But when the Holy Spirit brings it to life, when the Holy Spirit awakens it and causes it to and causes it to uh, uh, spring to life on the inside of us, we like, yes, Lord, now I understand. But watch what happens now. But but watch what happens with that understanding. Do you know what happens immediately? Strength, faith, hope. Patience. Come on, somebody. Why? Because now I see. Now I understand. Now I can. I'm ready to continue to move forward. Mm, 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 mm. Watch this. And so what he said was, "For I, the Lord God, rejoice over you, and in my rejoicing, I will cause you to rejoice." This was this was this was profound to me. All of it was really, but this was so profound to me because. What he was saying was, it's in my rejoicing, the substance that flows out of my singing over you is going to cause you to sing back to me. Somebody help me today, Lord Jesus, come on. When God sings over you, substance falls out. And when that substance that falls out begins to hit your life, watch this, you going to sing back to him. Somebody say, Lord, <laughs> sing over me. <laughs> Rejoice. Watch this. Let me get, watch this. Let's read. Zephaniah 317. Let's read. Let's read. Let's read. Let's read. I love, don't you guys just love a move of God? Amen. Watch this. You see? Yes, watch this. Uh, see, Gina Morris, th the Lord says this to you. You're getting ready to see it all make sense. Along with many of you here, you're getting ready to see it all make sense, especially those who have been in this kind of space where you heard from God, but there's almost been like a pause, right? There's always been... You're getting ready to see it make sense. And a lot of it, a lot of what the Lord was doing was preparing you for, right, was, was preparation, right? Because there was, some, there was some confidence that the Lord had to impart to you. There was some, uh, 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 there was some things that the Lord, he showed, me, he showed me that there were some things that he had to impart to you. Because there was there, there was more need for development and, 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 and uh, um, not in the way of just, you know, not in the way of like, oh, I'm a bad person. It wasn't in that way, but there were spiritual things that the Lord wanted to add to you. Some pertain to gifts, some work, some working, uh, some, some of the things worked out the fruits of the spirit, like patience and, 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 and choosing to believe God and, and, and stay focused and stay trusting God in the midst of all these things. And so there were things that God was working in the pause that you are going to say, Lord, I see what you have done for me. It wasn't, it was, it was never any form of neglect. And I want to say this to you and somebody else listening. It was never an, an indication. It was never a, an indication of, 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 uh, of God not not favoring you, not loving you. It wasn't an indication of how God felt about you. <sighs> Some people take the pause as an indication of how God feels about them because there are certain people who lack the clarity or watch this or who have not, uh, watch this, who do, uh, who do not go before God before they start speaking on behalf of God. And so they will tell you that the most laziest thing somebody can tell you is watch, watch this. Oh, that's just because there's sin in your life. Oh, well then, you know, well, there's just something wrong with you. You just got problems.
See, the pause is not always about sin. Sometimes it's about preparation. And sometimes, watch this, and sometimes it may not even be somebody there to tell us, but then the, 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 the speculation will begin to speak to us. Well, maybe it's because of this. Right. You can be you. You'll start. You'll start. You'll start maybe assuming that because it is a, it is a it is a it is a, a, a carnal perspective because the logical mind must find a logical conclusion. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> hear me, church. The logical mind must find logical conclusions. And when the logical mind can't find a logical conclusion, it results in frustration. Maybe it's because, right, maybe it's because I am loved. Maybe because nobody will ever love me. Maybe it's because, right, no man will ever want me. Maybe it's because no woman will want me, right? The logical mind must find logical conclusions, but be, be careful of being spiritually lazy. Because there are because you the last thing you want to do is get into it, get in a habit of, of relying on your logical conclusion and then start because then you'll start thinking, well, I done heard from God. No, you didn't. No, you didn't at all. No, you didn't at all. What you did was you took a logical conclusion. And as you begin to continue to operate in that, you're going to start calling it God. And that logical conclusion has not challenged you on no way. All it does is make sense. But let me tell you something. Oftentimes what makes sense also is also the ingredients that bring that make destruction. Uh oh. Uh, you know, OK, y'all think I'm playing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You see, let me just tell you something. Me and, and a couple of other you. Right. And a couple of other people, my, along with myself. You see, there were times when the things where where I can look back and, and see how the things that made sense were also the ingredients that made the destruction. It made sense at the time. It made sense at the time to go with that woman. Mm. Oh, y'all. 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 OK. OK. Uh-huh. 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 Uh huh. It made sense at the time to go with that man. It made sense at the. It made sense at the time. Oh boy. But I look back and like, oh, it made sense at the time to do it. But then watch this. What makes sense oftentimes are the ingredients for what makes destruction. Lean not on your own understanding. It, 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 in all your ways acknowledge God and so you have to be careful because the logical mind is prone to make sense out of situations because we want to learn how to we were trying to discern how to navigate but you got to be careful you got to be careful you got to be careful relying on the logical conclusions don't be lazy get before the throne room of God because what God be, what God what God has to say it may not make no sense at all Mm, 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 mm. Watch this, but it—I guarantee you—it'll make a miracle. Uh huh. I guarantee. Watch this. I guarantee you it'll, it'll it'll make you free. I guarantee you it'll bring forth promotion. I guarantee. Watch this. It'll make for life. Mm. It'll make for protection. So don't be spiritually lazy. And this is what people do when they're spiritually lazy. And then next thing you know, they start calling all their logical conclusions God. And that's when you really, really in danger. Mm-hmm. Why do you think some of you pastors, prophets right now, people can't people can't stand listening to you because what you what you saying don't make sense? Watch this, it's already opposing their God, their their the, the structure of their perception of God in their minds. They can't hear you because what you what you saying don't make no sense. Right? It's warring. <laughs> <laughs> to right to the God of their own mind and their flesh, right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> right? And you know, sometimes you have to go go through this process where where you you follow God, where you where you like, okay, Lord, man, right? Where you where even when God speaks, you like, okay, Lord, you know what? Um, right, uh, okay. You want me to do what now? 
right? Mary said this, I, tell, I say this story all the time because I love it. This is just the system. And I'm praying that you guys grab hold of because the Holy Spirit is imparting divine, I'm talking about next level preparation of knowledge, next level, next level flowing with God understanding. Mary said this, look, uh, he gonna tell y'all some stuff that may not make no sense at all. I'm paraphrasing. But whatever he tells you to do, do it. See, I want you to understand something. The end goal was is that they wanted wine. So Jesus told them to get them pots of water. Now you have the hindsight of, of looking back and seeing how it happened. But if Jesus was to show up to you right now, right, to show up to you right now, had you ne you never even never even hearing of the water into wine a uh, 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 story. And he was like, you know, we can really use some wine. He's like, yeah, go get me some water. First thing you're going to say, your logical mind is going to say, what does that have to do with, what does that have to do with wine? No, no, no. You didn't hear me. You didn't, you didn't hear me. Right. I asked for, I asked for wine. So it, what would make sense is go and get me a grape. Go and get me, go and get me a bucket of grapes. Right. Let me get to stomping on these things. That's logical. What does the water have to do with the wine? It's only in hindsight that you can make the, the equivocation between the water and the wine. Tell the truth. I'm just trying to help somebody listening right now out of that paradigm that you've been in. And the reason why the reason why you haven't been you haven't uh, 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 been positioned to move with God yet because your paradigm needs to change. For some people, your logical, there are some people who are listening in the background where your logical conclusion has been trying to destroy you. If it, if it wasn't for the grace of God, you would have already walked off a cliff. Your logical mind has been trying to tear you down. It has been laying trap after trap and the Lord has been going before you, right? Uh, flicking the stick from the, uh, uh, from off the box of the, of the, of the fowler that's trying to snare you like a bird. The Lord is just going in front of you like, oh man, that's a trap. And just flicking all these, right? <laughs> right. But your logical mind has been trying to do you in, but see, I want you under, I want you to understand something significant, whoever you are. It's not success just because the snare didn't snag you. The reason why that's a problem. See, it's not success just because the snare didn't snag you. Why? Because you still didn't walk into purpose. See, it's not enough just to not be snatched by the fowler. If I'm going down, if I'm still going down a path that doesn't lead me into purpose. I'm still being affected by not being able to walk into what God has for me. And so I thank him that the, the fowler did not snare me and snatch me up. But watch this. There is still a problem. There is still there. I'm, there, there is still there is still damage done because watch this. Be, there's still damage done. Why? Because even though this fowler didn't snag me, then guess what? The problem is because of the process, I still didn't walk into what God had. Right? So it's not without consequence. And so the purpose of God is that not only you be snared, but that you walk into what he has. Right? It's like, well, the devil didn't get me, but did purpose get you? Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody say, no, nah, purpose got to get me. <laughs> right? <laughs> I really win when purpose get me. See, it's not enough that the enemy couldn't do what he wanted to do. But the question is, is God able to do what he wanted to do? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. It's like, well, the devil didn't get to do what he wanted to do. But did God? Did God get to do what he wanted to do? You see, because each and every one of you listening right now, God wants to do something. And some of you still think that's a strange thing. But after today, 
after today in your time of prayer, may it no longer be strange to you. May you stop being afraid of the term odd because of the winds of God. May the truth of God's word make you available for the winds of God. Many of you listening right now are part of the win. And you know the thing about the win is you don't even have to, you know, some ways that people fight uh, being odd is they become more carnal in nature. So they try to become more verbose. And there are some people who, you know, right? And all they're doing is they're trying to fight past their insecurities of being different. They're trying to fight past their insecurities of, of being um, uh, estranged to other, uh, other people, right? They're trying to fight past those insecurities. And so they enter into a space of false bravado. But, I'm, but hear the word of the Lord for you. The Lord says, I don't need your false bravado. You don't have to be like, see, right? You don't write, be, you know, and that's a, and, and look, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a typical response for people when they're trying to do their best to answer the call of God on their life, but yet they're trying to fight through insecurity. They end up going through false bravado. Well, I don't know who you, cause I'm special. And I don't know who you think, right? You know? He don't need, need none of that. He don't need none of that false bravado, right? And so you're gonna find that even that there that the that the anointing can't be overriding, right? People will complain, people you but right. That's not where the Lord wants you to find your comfort at. Come on, somebody. He don't want you to find your comfort, right? Uh, 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 uh. He does not want you to find your comfort. Uh, he does not want you to find your comfort in the false bravado. He wants you to find your comfort in the fact that he selected you. That he called you. That he justified you. That he approved you of you. He wants you to find your comfort because in the comfort of God, there will always be, there will always be an opportunity for the fruits of humility to flow. Right? I, have to, I don't have to get your attention. If the anointing don't get your attention, then what, what hope do I got? What do I got? Right? I don't want to rely on carnal means to do supernatural things. Because then I'm gonna have to go into, I'm gonna have to go into uh, intimidation and fear, and now I'm dangerously close to entering into witchcraft. Jesus didn't do it. Disciples were tempted to do it. He's like, hold on, you don't know what spiritual of. Let's call down fire and judgment because they turned, they turned their back on you. They didn't want to receive you. Let's call it down. He's like, oh, you don't know what spiritual of. Called but unable to discern. He's like, no, nah, we ain't going up into that. We ain't going up into that. We ain't going. Let's do it like what Elijah did. You don't know what spirit you're of. Right? They were entering into a false space. Watch this while being called by God. Come on, somebody. You don't need no false bravado. You don't need it so that way you can that way you can rely on anointing you can still rebuke correct speak with authority authority there's nothing false about authority right you know some people hide there are some women who um, they hide their glory in false bravado thank you Holy Spirit there's a, a um, a young woman in particular here, the Lord is showing me. You see, the Lord does not want you to hide your glory hiding behind false bravado.
you know, and oftentimes people do it because they feel like, you know what, they would have otherwise cracked and, it, and, it, and it's an attempt to be strong, right? And so I totally understand. But don't hide behind that false bravado because your strength will come from the Lord and the Lord will not only make you beautiful, watch this, he will make you beautiful and the crown of glory that he puts on your head will speak louder than that false bravado would. You're going to see your beauty. Your, the crown of glory and beauty that the Lord puts on you, it's going to quiet more people than your false bravado because your false bravado will only breed contention. But, the God's, but, but, but God's glory upon your life will create silence because people won't be able to speak against it. Abigail, when she came to talk to David, she didn't have no false bravado. She had glory, discretion. And David had to do what? He had to shut up. <laughs> See, don't underestimate the power of God in working in your in your apostolic call before God. You see, the world tells us you can't really trust in the things of God and the ways of God because that's what'll get you taken out. But the devil is a liar. That's what it watches. That's what that's what'll get you blended with the kingdom of darkness. She went up to David and was like, Oh, good king. Oh, king. Right? Far be it from thee. Should a man of such noble right? She begins to run it down on David. David was like, Oh, you right. Oh, uh, yeah. Nah, uh, uh, okay. Nah, I appreciate it. Nah, you right. I shouldn't be. Oh, uh, no. Nah. Because I was about to kill everybody. You know that, right? Everybody was going to die tonight. Yeah, no. Nah. Everything that, everything that peed on the wall was going down tonight. That whole house. I was coming for everybody. Right? And she came and put that glory. She said, hold on. They, right? Her servant came and said, oh, man, uh, listen, we in trouble. Uh, you know David? Yeah. And his, and his mighty men? No, they coming. She was like, what? No, they coming because your husband, he's so, he so reckless. He, you know, he start talking to David's crazy like he, that wasn't David. <laughs> like that wasn't David, the mighty man of valor. And she was like, okay, let me fix what the fool did. Go on and prepare us an offering. And she said, hold on, let me put my crown on. <laughs> let me adjust my crown. And she went up to David and was like, oh, David, man of God, called by God, anointed by God. And David was like, yes. <laughs> All his wrath melted away. All right. But imagine if she would have went out there trying to be, well, God called me and God called me. And I just want to tell you, she would have been struck down right in front you see what I imagine if she would have went out there with all that false bravado. Oh, well, I'm, I'm a prophetess and God told me and I'm just here to tell you. And, and, and you, David would have been like, what? You just ramped it up a notch. Don't disregard your beauty. That's where your real power is. That's where your real power is. Right? <laughs> Had David, this mighty man of valor, talking like, you know what, I, you absolutely right. I, you know what, I should. I, no, right, I should not be doing that. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, how she gonna put David? Oh, man, David was just like, I'ma just, I'ma just, I'ma just go, I'ma be good. <laughs> I'ma be good. <laughs> you, would you marry me? <laughs> Uh, oh, <laughs> thinking you a mighty woman with no glory, right? <laughs> Come on, somebody. They was like, would you marry me? Would you? Would you be mine? Because <laughs> I need what you got in my life. Mm. I need what you, I, I need what you bring to the table. You connect me to purpose. You help me to be still when I'm ready to be reckless. Mm. 
I'm trying to tell you, stop following out the world after the world and all of their ways. They end up in destruction, but God's ways are proven. God's ways are proven. And if you assimilate to the order in which God calls you, you will find, watch this, you will find all that God has hidden in his call. <laughs> so watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. And look, I understand, you know, for some people, I know it's going to be diff it's difficult to grab because you're like, hold on. This is what I know, brother Eli. Remember, this is what you got to understand about God. Every invitation is out of love. You know, sometimes people are used to being uh, 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 marked uh, by uh, uh, a declaration of God in a negative way. And so anytime a, a, a declaration of God comes forth, they automatically think that, oh, God is saying I'm bad. And God is saying, no, God is inviting you into greater, greater than where you are now, greater than what you have now, greater than who you've been now, greater than what you've been able to do now. And so it's an invitation. And this comes with greater clarity. This is These are things that you have to begin to see. You really, see, because you're not in trouble until God stopped talking. When the invitation ceased to go out, there is always room for rejoicing when you hear God and when the invitation comes. And so a lot of this false uh, religious perspective has to be uh, destroyed in the body of Christ so that we may have clarity. Amen. Right. Your problem will come when God stopped talking. When, they, when there's no more invitations, that makes sense, right? So look, this is what the Lord said. He said, I will rejoice over thee and with joy uh, uh, he will rest in his love. Watch this. And then I'm done. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Zephaniah 3, 17. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. Watch this. He will rest in his love. Watch this. He will joy over thee with singing. It is so profound and, and really beyond past finding out how the Lord will make a determination based upon how he feels. He said, I will rest in my love. I will be satisfied. I will be satisfied with the subsequent actions based upon my love. I'm going to determine everything based upon how I feel about you. My heart towards you. Oh, boy. I know, I know. So I want to wrap this up. Look. 18, I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of uh, who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Verse 19 says this, behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee and I will save her that uh, halted and gathered her that was driven out. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even in that time will I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before the eyes, before your eyes, says the Lord. What do you see here? When he began to praise, things begin to change. When he began to rejoice over the people, it also came with a mandate and a shifting of situations for the people in which he was singing over. And this is what the Lord is saying to you today, that he is singing over you, that he will begin to sing over you. And as God begins to sing over you, it's not about what's the, it's not about the climate around you, but it's, it's not about the climate of the world and what's happening with the world. Watch this. It's about what God it will do for you in the midst of it. As God begins to shape your life, watch this, when everything is seeming like it's become undone you see because every praise of God when God begins to sing things change in your favor and you can see here in Zephaniah from Zephaniah 3 17 down how the the singing the singing was not was not just a noise he was making or a sound or a celebration but it was also a substance 
right? It was also a substance that God was releasing to order the change for his people. Amen. And listen, that's my word for you guys today. God bless you, family. God bless you all. We love you all.